Hi everyone, Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and here's another video in my series to help you become a better conversationalist. My series is called How to Make Small Talk and today I want to talk about something that really can freak us out which is when you're speaking to someone new or even someone not new I guess and the conversation sort of comes to a dead end and you don't know what to say and they look at you awkwardly and you feel anxious or self-conscious and you're like um what now and uh, so i actually want to teach you a whole bunch of approaches that you can take to re-spark dead ends in conversations and um i guess you can experiment with all of them previously uh, i think it's in the second video i talked about the importance of actually being able to speak about yourself a little bit to give other people material to work with because um, a lot of the self-help media on becoming a better conversationalist just says people love to talk about themselves so you should just listen and ask questions and as I labor the point that can really make people feel in the spotlight becoming a great conversationalist in a way really means taking responsibility for your environment it's an awesome thing to be able to do to be the one that steps up to re-spark the dead end to throw the other person some fuel they will love you for it you will save them from feeling anxious and awkward and if you're the person that can provide the goods if you go oh if you notice how you feel and you go oh i see what's happening here she's wondering what to say like what she should say to me um, well i'm going to be the one i'm going to be the one that steps up i'm going to be the one that makes it easier so um jack james meek says i like sharing ideas when there's nothing to say that's that's a good uh, th that's that's an option you know if you've got an idea in your head you can sh save it so if you do feel social if you do feel self-conscious in social situations really that's fine right it's pretty common it's maybe more common than you think you don't know how how much the, the people around you might feel socially anxious because you they don't let it show the main thing is to bring your awareness to the present moment and notice and that will give you an ability to like take a deep breath and relax and clear your mind so that you can think of something to say uh, I'd, like i said i'm going to give some specific suggestions but actually the more you subject yourself to the opportunity to actually experience that little bit of anxiety the the more you're actually learning to calm down your body and say well what am i going to do now i'm going to take charge of this conversation and i really really encourage people any opportunity you can get when you order something at the restaurant when you buy something in the shops speak to the checkout assistant if you live in a culture where that's acceptable if you're at a bar with your friends and you go up the bar for a drink if people are around hey Hey, like start you can start a conversation there's nothing wrong with doing it in fact people often really really like it because they're out they want something good they want something interesting to happen that wouldn't just happen at home so it's a good opportunity and, and to take the opportunity so you don't need to show that you're nervous either just like straighten up your back and take a deep breath because your kind of state communicates it's not being inauthentic you're just like learning to be yourself around others and most of our negative conditioning around that comes from when we were youngsters so a lot of my work has been to create opportunities to learn and the more i've experienced talking to people i don't know going out my way to do so the more authentic i've become because i realized how try hard i was at first and how actually none of that was actually necessary the me that comes out when i'm more relaxed I don't feel like I need to convince anyone to like me because I feel organic. I, I see their body language more than I used to. I see if they're anxious or nervous or if they're looking at me for social cues more. I used to just be looking around at everyone else for social cues, but I didn't even know I was doing it. It projects low self-esteem if you're always the one looking around. Now, the more people begin to look to you for guidance, then you're basically responsible you're taking a pressure off them and that's a really awesome thing to be able to share with people so some specific examples of ways that you can re-spark dead ends and conversations and um, one is just really simply to pick up on something that they said previously and go back to it so you'd say like so you you, you said you went rafting in the summer what was that like and um, say tell me something more about that anything and um, 
uh, even if you're asked a que if you're asked a question, it's okay to stop and say, "Hmm, I need to think about that for a minute." Actually, being able to bring a pause into conversations also projects a sort of relaxed atmosphere. And if you're if you're able to commit to it and don't get well nervous in the pause, and um, as Jack James said about um, get, uh, sharing information, you can just volunteer some information about yourself, like you can think what you've been doing earlier in this week, or talk about one of your passions or something like that. Like uh, what one I used once was, uh, I just I can't remember what the context was, but it's kind of a funny quirky story, and I just chucked it out to try it out a couple of times and I loved the results. I was like, do you know what? I can never finish a cup of coffee. Like whenever I pour myself a cup of coffee, I go to the laptop and I drink like half of it or something like that. So what I did was I thought, well, maybe I could just fill half of the cup. And then when I did that, um, it still went cold. So I tried a third of the cup, but then I couldn't put the right amount of milk in and then it got too cold. And so it's uh, I, I know I just give ridiculous details about this and said that in my co-working space, like I felt really guilty because, you know, there's co communal coffee there and I hated wasting it. And one time someone was just like, I hate people like you. I have to pick up the coffee cups from all over, from all over the house, you know, in my flat or whatever it was. And it was really funny because we could banter on it and uh, definitely um my <laughs> I could, my my flatmates could be able to sympathize with their position so it's just like something really simple but kind of quirky and funny and tell a related or unrelated anecdote as i've got another video in this series you should if you've not seen it already go back and listen to it that will help you tell anecdotes i created the term micro anecdote to signify the idea of something that you can just drop into a conversation in one sentence or two, you know, I, uh, um, oh, I like cooking, but it's really stressful. I used to have to chase my ex-girlfriend out of the kitchen before because if she didn't, because if I didn't, if she stuck around, I would snap at her. There's a little detail that you can tell in a sentence or two that is much, much more relatable than just sharing factual information. Um, and people can, people can, oh yeah, you know, they can relate to something from your own life. And the great thing about a micro anecdote is you can just slip it in, even if someone's mid saying something, if it's only a sentence or two, you can slip it in. Or if you've just started to talk to someone, it's not good to tell big long stories at the beginning of interactions because it demands on people's patience. But when there's a um, connection established, then you can tell longer and longer stories. So the idea of a micro anecdote is itself a useful one. Um, very simple. So what are you doing for the rest of the week? That's a pretty hard, um, or at the weekend, that's a pretty low risk approach. Um, I think that it's better to say what you're doing at the weekend, to be honest, because they can, that gives them more options. They can say, oh, that's interesting. I'm doing this weekend such and such and such and such or they can talk about your thing, um, depending on how they feel. It is quite good to get other people talking about their, their stuff, but you can you can be doing more talking while talking about, say, what they're doing at, at the weekend, but you're still in the frame of speaking about them rather than just speaking about yourself. So, And also, you know, this is about experimentation. There's not one right answer. The best thing is to to be honest, the best thing is to be good at doing all of these things. Be t good at talking about yourself. Be a good listener. Be a good good about talking about other people. To be good at talking about the person that you're talking to. And you know, the more strings you have to your bow, the more flexible you are. The more you'll enjoy conversations, and the more people will enjoy conversations than you. Another great thing is to just look around the environment and see. Uh, I remember once I was in a tropical theme bar, I was like, ah, look at the pineapple over there, whatever it was, you know, you can just, um, or you can comment on, oh, I like your shirt, it really suits you, that's kind of in the environment, um, look around, is there anything fun, funny happening, is there anything you can comment on, there is always material in your environment, if you run out of material. Another good one is, you know, you just go, let me show you something cool, and then you take out a picture of a meme, or something on your iPhone or, or your smartphone, show them something funny or interesting, a short video, 30 seconds, 
um, or it's, you know something that you videoed with your pals, something that's funny. It would be good to have a couple of things on there so that if you get into a dead end situation, you can show them something funny on your phone. And then I've got a friend that's really good at telling like random facts. He just knows so much stuff about like historical figures and uh, he, he just remembers these anecdotes about them. And it's really impressive the way that sometimes in conversation, he just tells like a really weird fact about someone, uh, some historical figure, and they're always really, really interesting. So that's not something that I've actually got into the habit of doing that often, but I've seen it be very effective, especially when he does it. So I, I just wrote one down. In my ebook, How to Make Small Talk, which you can get on Amazon Kindle if you like, um, I had this example of a random fact. And it's like, did you know that in 2006, someone tried to sell New Zealand on eBay? The price got up to $3,000 before eBay shut it down. So, you know, that's quite interesting. And I said, it's better if you can comment on the fact afterwards. And I just got some jokey comments like, I bet it wasn't even the real owner that put it up there. Or I don't think actually New Zealand is worth that much. You know, that's something that could get a laugh out of someone. Um, and you have to be able to actually prepare to continue the conversation after that. So you might not want to choose a random fact that you can uh, deliver a conversation on unless you just want, if, unless when they ask you a detail, you just actually admit the fact that you just looked up on Google randomly to have something to say if things got awkward. So yeah, the, another thing is, I don't really recommend this in this circumstance. I'm going to do a whole video next week on the concept of pointing out the elephant in the room and the usefulness of it. You need to be pretty confident to go, well, that just got awkward. Uh, oh, I can see we're both looking for something to say now. It's not really the, the you could try it out. Um, you, might be, you might be able to deliver on it, but there are definitely some circumstances where you can just point out the, the fact that it's awkward and that will actually break the tension. So if you think this is useful, do me a please, do me a favor and share it on your Facebook wall. Actually, the best way to get it out to people is just to share it on Messenger and just hit message a few times, message it to a few people that might find it interesting. That would really help me. So I think this, I think these videos are really good and I'd like them to help more people. Yeah, you can help me do that. If you would like to listen to the, subscribe to the Be Yourself and Love It podcast, these are going out in audio format and I guess until next week, be yourself, but don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.